and we've also got Matthew Wright. Uh, we, we're going to start off with the news that the Duke of York has settled the sex assault case filed against him by Virginia Dufresne uh, for undisclosed sum of money. Yeah. So, Camilla, let's start with you. Firstly, as a Royal Correspondent, what do you know about this? What can you tell us about this that we, we haven't seen in the headlines? Well, we think undisclosed might be around £12 million. So, Seriously? Yeah, a significant amount of money. That's what the Telegraph's reporting this morning and most of the papers accord with that. Obviously, it's a surprise in terms of timing because it was only quite recently that his legal team were talking about him having his day in court. Did you think it was going to go to court? Well, uh, in a way, we shouldn't be that surprised because apparently more than 90% of all civil claims in the US end up settling before right. they go to trial. So the trouble is with a settlement like this is that there will always be this implication of guilt even though he protests his innocence. Well, and it should be stressed thing. I mean... that he's not been found guilty of anything in a court of law, but the trouble is, if you're found guilty in the court of public opinion, then it's really difficult to restore your reputation and redeem yourself. And let's be honest, what he was definitely guilty of was this just giant and catastrophic error of judgment in maintaining his friendship with Epstein after he had been released yeah. from prison. Yeah. He stayed with him in New York. That photograph taken by the News of the World of them strolling through Central Park, which then, curiously, he went on to say he didn't regret in the Newsnight interview of 2019, saying, oh, actually, it was quite good I was friends with Epstein because he opened many doors and helped me make connections. It's interesting... It's just that lack of self-awareness. Right? Well, there's some self-awareness in this statement, right, because as well as saying that he was going to support Mrs Giuffre's, um Victims' Rights Charity and that he never intended to malign her character and that he accepts that she has suffered both as an established victim of abuse and as a result of, made, of unfair public attacks, he's also now saying that he does regret his association with Epstein. But the whole problem is, why didn't he say that mm. in 2011? This has been going on a for a decade, largely because he hasn't grasped the nettle and dealt with this soon enough. Matthew, just picking up on, on what Camilla's saying, I mean, it's a sort of extraordinary implication here. You're, you're, he's paying millions of pounds to someone that up until recently he has no memory of meeting. That's, That's right. a good point. He, he said he'd never met Virginia Giuffre. And if I may, everybody tends to naturally frame it if we're in the UK. He's our Prince Andrew, but it would be nice, wouldn't it, to actually frame this story from the view of the woman who claims she was the victim, who claims that she was, you know, sexually abused by Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew said that he didn't, he'd never met her. So I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not at all surprised by the settlement. I think Camilla's absolutely right. 90% of these claims uh, end this way. But it's a very unhappy situation. It reminds me of somebody else that was very rich who handed $28 million to a 14-year-old boy who had alleged that he'd been sexually abused, Michael Jackson. And again, Michael Jackson admitted no guilt, but it's fair to say that that stain uh, on his character stayed with him until the end. And uh, I've also been seeing today on Twitter, a social media, a number of people who work with victims of sex abuse, and they are frankly revolted by the idea of Prince Andrew, a man who's done nothing to help the cause of sex abuse and women who've been sexually trafficked, nothing whatsoever, is suddenly having given away 12 million pounds. We don't even know whose money it is yet. I mean, Prince Andrew, some of his financial arrangements and some of the, the money he's, uh, people he's done deals with are not exactly uh, top drawer, top table. Uh, and I, I personally, I don't know about the, the viewers, but I would deeply, deeply, deeply resent if one penny of this settlement came out of UK taxpayers' money. I, I, I just, it, it would be nauseating if that's how things concluded. Any, any idea where that money will come from? So we think he sold his ski chalet in Verbier, which may have pocketed him millions of pounds, but we don't know how much. Equally, we think that the Queen has been contributing to his legal bills as his loving wow. mother. Um, so it's hard to tell. With regard to taxpayers' cash, at the moment, the taxpayers funding his security, that's about it. I mean, yep. it, there's this suggestion now that he might turn up at the a memorial service to the Duke of Edinburgh, which is taking place at the end of March at Westminster Abbey, but then we'll not see him in public at all and he won't have any role in the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, which I think is the right decision. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the royals are acutely aware that they're only there for as long as the public want them there. And while the Queen remains sacrosanct Sorry. on the throne, nobody wants to see him in public. This idea that he can help 
victims of sex trafficking. Yeah, because and he in, does in say time, that in his speech, doesn't he, about rehabilitating? He I wants know, to fight against the evils of sex trafficking talk and about by too, supporting its victims. Yeah, but talk about too soon. Yeah. I mean, who's asking him to do this? Yeah. Um, so where does he go from here, then? Well, well, at the moment, I think, completely below radar. My sense is, yeah. in Team York, there's discussions around can he ever be rehabilitated. He can't in public life because when he was stripped of his royal and military associations last month, it was expre expressly said there's no going back. So those patronages are going to be handed They're on gone. to other members of the royal family. Right. So in a public capacity, he can't go back. He is a private citizen. So if he does do any of this charitable work, he does it as a private citizen. Does he get any publicity for it? Well, no, probably not. Um, equally, we've got to be mindful of the fact that his mother is supportive of him. While she's on the throne, I suppose he's got limited time for rehabilitation. Once Prince Charles is on the throne, there's going to be even less sympathy for him because let's not forget it was his brother and his, his nephew, the Duke of Cambridge, who pushed for this severing of royal ties in the first place. So he's in a really very, very yeah. difficult position. And what about Virginia? Because apparently she's not allowed to talk about this case at all until after the Jubilee. So will we find out more? Um, I don't know what sort of agreements have been reached. Obviously, the statements, like this jointly agreed yeah. statement that was negotiated and thrashed out over 10 days, and in it, he doesn't admit any liability. And it was suggested that she wanted him to show some sort of Remorse. admission of guilt. Mm. That That's absent, I think, is interesting. Maybe it's part of the whole legal wrangling. She's entitled to speak after the Platinum Jubilee. Timing of that will be interesting, because the other thing that's happening after the Platinum Jubilee is Prince Harry's bringing out his biography. Right. Oh, my goodness, it's all going this way. It'll keep us busy, though. OK, uh, <laughs> let's move on. See why Prince Harry got out.